Hi dearest, how are you all doing? It's great to have you back in my channel, The Vent Crafts. So today I'm going to be making you my own version of Kate Middleton's Brown Fascinator. In this video today, you're going to be learning how to mold a teardrop fascinator with a hard block. And also you're going to be learning how to do that spiral stuff on top of the Kate Middleton Brown Fascinator and put them all together to make this lovely cute elegant fascinator so let's see the items we need to make it you'll be needing the nylon you're going to use to wrap the um, mold then a nylon that you would place your mold on top when molding then your tom tags i'm sure you know what that will be used for but you'll see it later if you don't then these are my straw mats pieces that i have available so you'll be seeing how i made use of them do you call it straw mat or paper mat? Let me know in the comment section below. What do you call this material? Alright, the next thing you'll be needing is your oil base. I'm making use of soulmate hair cream. And then you have your measurement tape to do your measurements. Then you have your mold. Now this is the hat block we're going to be using and it's called a teardrop because of the shape. You can see how it points down like a tears. Like a tear, tears. Alright, that's my stiffener and my scissors okay so clear off let's begin so the first thing i'm going to do is lay my nylon bag where i'm going to be molding on top so that i don't stay in my workstation and then i cover up my hat block with the nylon now this to ensure that the wood doesn't spoil all right after then the next thing i'm going to be doing is to check my materials the straw mats and see which one will be best for me to make use of all right so keep watching and learning now i think this is a perfect match okay but i'm going to be cutting it so the way you do it you might want to first of all measure your mold like so from the longest part okay since it's irregular shape and you add two inches extra to it <laughs> I'm measuring my um, straw mat like that. Either you do that or you place your straw mat on top of the hat block that you've covered or you have not covered and just give it some little bit of distance. You check it that it will go underneath your hat block where you're going to be using your tongue tack. So that's what I did finally and I cut out the excess. So now I'm going to be using this one that I've cut to measure out the second. Um, material because I'm make, going to be making use of two layers of the material so I'm going to place this and just cut it to give me the measurements that I need the next thing you want to do is um, use your oil base and cream out your hat block that has been covered with nylon now this to ensure that after you have molded your fascinator base that it comes out easily from the hat block. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to take one layer first of all of the straw mat and I'm going to be putting my stiffener on it. I use my hand. I think you need to wear gloves actually. Some people use brush. I remember I used to do the dipping method but well, this is what I'm doing right now. The stiffener is not too thick and not too watery. And I hope you get to see how it is sort of okay so that's what i'm going to do i'm going to spread it all over the material both the first layer and the second layer So I've done the first layer for you so you'll be able to do the same to the second layer. Okay so now it's time to put our material on top of our hat block. Remember this has been stiffened already 
so i'll put the first layer and the other one i'll put it in a different direction from how the pattern of the straws on the, the strips of the straws are on the straw mat i hope you get what i mean now the next thing i'm going to do is check to ensure that all parts would cover up so i know that i've placed it rightly once that's done the next thing is to do my work north south east and west always ensure that you put your thumbnails on the north south east and west of the hat block that you are molding this ensures that you have a perfect finish smooth you see it very soon once i'm molded you see how smooth it is so that's what i'm doing keep watching and learning now you drag it once you put on the knot if you're putting on the south you drag it to make it firm you put on the west you drag the east side to make it firm the next thing you do now is to start grabbing the in between the knot and the west i think that's the direction but in between all the four pins that you have placed and you start putting your thumbnails to hold it down so i'm going to be doing that all around so enjoy the music as you watch how to put your thumb tag on your molded block as you mold your fascinator base. <laughs> you are not on the in the vent academy reception i must tell you you are missing out because we have so many giveaways so many discounts and so many knowledge to be grabbed in this craft business so do click on the vent craft academy reception be in the description and join us to gather more knowledge and also if you want to know how to mold the um teardrop using padded i already have a course on that so you can join us in fascinator class two you get to the vent craft academy and you make your request for it So the next thing you do of course is to take it out to the sun to dry. So I'm using my uh, screwdriver to try to pluck out, not to try, I'm using my screwdriver to bring out the tongue tags. And after I was done doing that, removing all the tongue tags, I noticed that the back was still a bit wet so I'm gonna still put it out in the sun to dry further. Okay, so while, while that is drying, I'm going to take this long strip now and I'm going to cut it 3 inches by the total length of what is left. I want to use, see if this could be enough to make the spiral, um, spiral strand on top of the fascinator base. So once I'm done with cutting this 3 by the length, I would put it on top of another layer and cut the same so i actually have three pieces of that i'm actually going to take it to the sewing machine to sew it all the way down and turn it all around so let's continue keep watching and learning <laughs>
have sewn them already and I'm actually sewed two pieces and then I turned one inside out like so keep watching and learning just in case you would still do this but if you stay on you will find out what happened later also you want to stay till the end of this video because we have a game challenge today and also we'll be announcing the winner for last week's challenge keep watching and learning okay next thing you want to do is you take your stiffener and you're going to be spreading it on the strips now you get to know whether we use two or one so keep watching and learning ensure you put the um, stiffener both on the front and the back of the strips and once you're done you take them outside to dry and while it's drying you can face the next challenge which is bringing out the mold from the hat block remember it didn't dry and we had to put it back out to continue drying so now what you do first of all is you use your scissors and cut off the excess don't worry if you have to cut out some nylon there's no problem about that so you trim it as low as you can but make sure you leave some parts as low as you can so you'll be able to take it off the hat block so now i'm able to take it off the hat block like so and the next thing I'm going to do is push up the parts that folded in while I was taking it in, shape it back and take my bronze hat wire. Now if you haven't attended our free hat wire class, you might want to so that you'll be able to know what type of hat wire to use for what type of occasion. We have it there and it's a free class, you're not paying anything. If you want to attend, just go to the description below and click on the Vencraft Academy reception and there you can ask for the hat wire free class okay so now we're pushing in the bronze hat wire in to take its shape once you've gotten the size of the hat wire you need to as and after you've placed it and it has overlapped the next thing you want to do is take your fame my famous hat wire cutter and cut it and now after we have cut it now you need to put it back inside and get its proper shape you know the first time we put it in what we're trying to do was get the measurement that we need to cut out now as you're putting it you're bending it to nato base to take the shape of the fascinator base so that's what i'm doing and when you bring it out now you're going to make sure you leave it in that shape okay so I've brought it out and the next thing I'm going to do is to wrap it up with my thread now you can see that it has taken the shape of the teardrop so i'm wrapping it up first of all with my thread to hold it together Okay, that done the next thing we're going to do is to wrap the hat wire with uh, um, bias now I'm using the straight method and I'm, I'm not using the loop I hope you know the straight and the loop if you join the hat wire class you get to know about the straight and the hoop wrapping keep watching and learning Remember we used two layer of um, the straw mat and so it's a bit visible so you want to cover your hat wire with bias at size it being visible also the hat wire could rust and then it would stain your fascinator once done with that you place the wrapped hat wire into your teardrop fascinator base so you place them in position just the same way you brought it out. After that, the next 
thing you want to do is to close up the flaps and in this case I'm making use of Google Gun watching and learning oh great news yeah my birthday is coming up in two days time and i'm actually giving out gifts to everyone that comes to the event craft academy what you need to do is you get to the event craft academy reception you go through our 15 classes that are available and you tell us the price you want to pay for one class just you pick a class and tell us the price you can afford to pay for one class so that's my gift to you now in closing it up you um, make use of pegs also so what I did was I put my uhu gum all the way around and then I started pegging from the first place I started which would have stayed drying before the other part then I do it all the way around and leave it for a while then after a while I take it off I also still look at it go through it to ensure no part opens up <coughs> excuse me if any part opens up then I put glue there again and peg it till it's completely dry after that's done then the next thing you want to do is put your elastic band now this elastic band i measured 13 inches yours might not be 13 inches depending on how elastic the elastic band is you could check it on your head or the head of a dummy or the head of the person you're making the fascinator for <laughs> So that's what I did and after that I sewed it like so. Keep watching and learning. done the next thing you want to do is to cover up the joining part with your bias or you could make use of peter sham if you followed me before my videos you'll know that i have issues with peter sham i would rather use bias because it tends to flow in the shape you take it because of the um, small width but um, peter sham is quite wide so i make use of that only when i'm covering the joining part the crown and the base of a hat but depending on what you can do you can use yeah that's one thing about our our job or our work or our creativity you can be creative and use what works with you or what you can get from around you Okay, so our strip has dried and now it's a bit stiff so you can use it and shape and form the design you want to so I was actually I started forming it and then it was not just I couldn't really remember how I saw it so I got my phone out and I stayed following it, it took a lot of hoops hips hats hoops ass and then <laughs> kept on redoing and redoing as you will see in the video but finally I got it or what do you think the outcome Finally, when you get to the end of the video, do let me know. What would you grade me from 1 to 10? Did it come out looking like it mirrored things on? Or what do you think? So, I finally 
already saw that the one that was turned inside out didn't look good at all it wasn't smooth so i finally used the one that was not turned inside out so a good thing that i made i had two strips isn't it If you enjoyed this video please do give me a thumbs up and if you haven't subscribed to defend crafts oh please do so right now you won't regret it